Okay, so we're going to start now teaching one of the, the first command, you know, in the list of seven commands of Jesus. And the first one is about repentance and believing. Now, one of the things we always want to start with is prayer. You know, so we always, do you remember the Bible verse we talked about beginning with? It's in Psalms. Psalms 2 something. Psalms 25. Oh, well, see it Psalms 25, verses 4 and 5. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, here, you read it. Since I've got the only Bible. <laughs> All right. Psalms 25. At the bottom, on the right. 4 and 5. 4 and 5. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all the day long. So we always want to get somebody, you know, it's just not me doing everything. The expectation is like, all of us are going to participate. You can't be a ghost, you know, as we said in the military, yeah. you know, standing back and not taking part. It's like everybody has a part to play. So <clears throat> because we're a family, you know, we're the family of God. So we're all going to be participating here. So we begin with prayer. So the first command is repenting and believing from Mark. Chapter 1, verses 15, Jesus says, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe the good news. So this is a command of Jesus, so this is why it's important that we obey those commands. So that's why it's important that we teach these to, the, to a new believer. So we're going to begin with the story of Zacchaeus. <laughs> Zacchaeus. Which is in uh, Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. And I'm just going to tell you the story. And then, but as you listen to the story, we've talked about four questions. What does this teach me about God? What does it teach me about man? What should I not do? What should I do? So as you listen to the story, think about those four questions because we're going to cover those when the story's finished, okay? So this is a story from the Bible. It's a true story. One day, Jesus was getting to go. He was coming down into this town named Jericho. And in that town lived a man named Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector. He was the chief tax collector. He was the, the boss tax collector, and he was a very wealthy man. Now, Jesus came into this town, and a great crowd came around. And Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, but he couldn't because of all the big crowds all around. So Zacchaeus, he ran ahead down the road where Jesus was going, and he found this tree and he climbed up in the tree because he wanted to see Jesus. Now, as Jesus, he came, the Bible says Jesus came down the road and he arrived at that spot and he looked up into the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. I must go to your house today. And Zacchaeus, he was excited. He immediately came down out of the tree and he took Jesus to his home. Now, all the people, all the crowd that was there, they started grumbling and murmuring, saying, look at Jesus going to the home of a sinner. Now, when Jesus got there to the home, Zacchaeus, he was excited. And he, but he said, look, Lord, if I have, I will give half of everything that I own to the poor. He says, and if I've ever stolen anything from anybody, I will pay them back four times what I took. And Jesus, he, he looked at them and he, and he said, Today, salvation's come to this home. This is a child of Abraham. He says, the son of man came to seek and save that which is lost. Now, that's the story of Zacchaeus. Now, if you're trying to teach somebody that story, to remember that story, you'd have to repeat that two or three times. But we're in America, so like most people can read, so we can, you know, do that, have them so what read you're it. what saying is you might tell the story yeah. two more if was, times. If I was doing this in the oral culture... I would go through it, maybe tell the story a second time, and or I'd go through it and just ask leading questions. You know, Jesus coming to a town. What was the town's name? Okay. You know, so Jericho. But as okay. a counselor, they, I mean, a lot of kids <clears throat> can't read really well, mm -hmm. um, and they might be able to, to when they're doing the, the sword diagram, ask the, retell the story again. Say, yeah. Listen, let me tell it to you again. <clears throat> and yeah. And Most so of the time, you'd want happen. to tell them a couple times. You know, it was like, listen to the story. I want you to remember it. And 
tell them, tell them two times. Then the third time, say, now Jesus is coming to a town. What's the name of the town? Jericho. Now, when Jesus got to the town, what happened? You know, a big crowd came around. Now, who lived in that town? Zacchaeus. And who was Zacchaeus? He was a tax collector. He was a chief tax collector. He was rich. You know. I noticed you didn't say anything but, about him being little in the whole thing. I'm just okay. I, I, well, that, yeah. To me, that makes Zacchaeus more personal, more. It he, makes he's not more just important. rich. And he's got a problem too, or well, he's got he's got a. Um, he, I think they would relate better because they're children. They're young. Oh, yeah. So it's okay. like, you know, I'm outside because I'm different and I can't. Well, Tracy probably didn't mean we were out. Hear, yeah. See, hear, whatever. Yeah. I kind of messed up on the story a little bit because I got a couple things out of order. So that's kind of oh, messed I me didn't up. So I mean that you messed up. <laughs> I just noticed anyway, that's why you get to tell again, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, because I mean, usually if you tell a story, unless you just have it flat out memorized. Which I don't, you know. I, You've got key points probably, memorized. Yeah, there's key points, and there's, you know, like what Jesus says. I want to make sure I say those words exactly, or I want to make sure that it says Jesus came to this spot. He looked up in a tree, called him by name, Zacchaeus. You come down. I must go to your house today. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to teach somebody to to remember the story, like in an oral culture. It's good to tell them that story twice so they can hear it twice. And if you try to stay the same, keep it exactly, you know, as close as you can to being the same the second time. And uh, and then a third time, go through it. And just ask them questions, like I said, leading questions that kind of draw out from them. And that will help them, you know, after hearing it three times, then you can kind of move on and then start asking the questions. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's, that's how we have done it with the... Uh, with the oral cultures. Okay, so we're talking about repentance and believing, the first command, we told the story of Zacchaeus. Now we want to go back and think about that story and the, and the four questions, the four sword questions. What do we learn from that story? You know, so the first question, the sword points toward the heaven, the question is, what does this teach us about God? So this is the time you get to you know, have some input here. So what does this teach us about God? And Jesus is God. So any story that has anything about Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, you know, the Trinity, it's like all, all three of those kind of fall into this category. So what do we learn from that story? Um, Jesus saw Zacchaeus. And, I, and he responded to Zacchaeus's desire to know Jesus or, or see Jesus. Okay. He called him by name. So that I means God knows us, right? It's like a relationship. Yeah, he called Zacchaeus by name and he's just walking into this town. So Right. He, he, knows, he hadn't he knows met everything. him before and he knew where he was. So that means God knows everything we do, where we are and all about us, in my understanding. So he he knew that Zacchaeus lived in that town. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going yeah. to your house today. Well, that's going to be kind of difficult, because actually I'm not from this area. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those are good. So he saw him, he called him by name, he knew his location, he knew his desire that he was seeking him. What if somebody say something else? G Jesus wanted to be with Zacchaeus. He, he went to his house. He, Jesus said, I came to seek and save the lost. So he was looking for people who needed him. Yeah. Well, is that key as qualified as lost? Everything's yeah. good here. That was his purpose. You know, seek and save the lost. Anything else? So whose salvation come from? Well, God, Jesus. Can we get there on our own? No. 
we see that in the story because Zacchaeus was looking for was, something, but he wasn't able to get it until Jesus showed up. Right. And yeah, we're know talking what about. Probably is. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about repentance, believing, which is salvation. You know, and so Jesus, I mean, he knew, like you said, he knew he was seeking. That's his job. You know, his purpose on while he was here on earth was to seek and save the lost. So it's uh, that was his. Uh, That was his purpose. That was what he was. Uh, That's what he was doing, you know. So, to save somebody, you know, that comes from Jesus. That comes mm-hmm. from God. We can't. We can't reach God our own. It's only mm-hmm. because of what Jesus has done for us. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Um. Jesus referred to him as a. One of the child of Abraham. Yeah. Which I don't know if that would have That's more of the, the man. Him, the child of Abraham. Well, we can always go back. That's that's a good start. If uh-huh. something comes to your mind while we're going through this, you know. So the second question is what does it teach us about man? Um, man was lost, and Zacchaeus was lost, and I think Jesus came to seek and save the lost. So. One thing that always has helped me, you know, we're, we're looking at these four questions. You know, what does this teach us about man? The second question. But what helps me is think about the individuals who is in the picture in this story. You know, we have Zacchaeus. We have. Oh, yeah. Who else was there? The crowd that was judging Zacchaeus. Right. And grumbling against yeah. God, too. The grumbling against Jesus. Mm-hmm. And we have the people who Zacchaeus hurt and stole from. Yeah. And the, when he said judging, the people were judging, they were actually judging. Zacchaeus for what they their take on who he was you know yeah he's a tax collector he's a you know so they thought they looked down upon him because of what they thought of him yeah they didn't look yeah. what Jesus saw in him but and their the fact that they were judging Zacchaeus <laughs> Meant that they missed out on Jesus because they mm-hmm. were yeah. they were judging Jesus too because of, the, of his acceptance of um, mm-hmm. Zacchaeus, mm-hmm. and so their judgment caused them to miss out on the whole. They did they experience did. that they could have had. And That's right. They missed out yeah. on the party. They missed out on being with Jesus because they they were judging. Right. So they. You know, it shows that these people, they, one of the things I always, I always think of is they wrote Zacchaeus off. You know, he was, he's a sinner too far gone. But in Jesus' eyes, he has value, like we talked about earlier. And, and, in, and in Jesus' eyes, we're all sinners. Mm-hmm. Right. So they, they, they'd gotten their black sheet and said, he's bad, mm-hmm. therefore I must be good. Mm-hmm. And Jesus is kind of threatening their bad because um, they need him to be bad so that they can look good. Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely comparing themselves. But I think sometimes we do that too where we think, I'm okay because I'm not as bad as other people I know. Look at them. I don't need to repent. I know people who are worse than I am. We have levels of sin in our own mind. And it's not that way. Sin is sin. But it's really hard to... Just realize everything. What else we learn system. about Zacchaeus? I mean, he was lost. He was seeking. He was rich. And his riches weren't enough. He had worldly riches. He, he had, what? He had worldly riches. Yeah. He also apparently 
took more than he was supposed to, or he wouldn't have said, if I have, I will give back four times. And he must, this is what I always think, he must not have been a whole lot, or he couldn't say, I can give him back four times. Yeah, give half away. Then he said, I'll pay him back four times, whatever it was. So he must have had a good accountant. (laughs) You know, he must have been good at that, to know exactly what he could do and, but he had, he changed at that point. He had repented. Mm-hmm. So that's something Zacchaeus repented. Yeah, and Zacchaeus was excited about telling Jesus that, that the change that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. That there was, I mean, there was a change in his heart. He, he was excited about getting, giving his wealth away, mm-hmm. which is a real change Evidence, from being yeah. a thief where he's trying to gain more and um, and yeah, apparently giving to the poor wasn't a normal thing so he was he's stingy too mm-hmm. and now he's there's a change that's happened in how he thinks because now he's his big excitement with what I'm going to do with this money now is I'm going to give it away I'm going to restore what I've taken and I'm going to give to the poor mm-hmm. and, that, and what, what what was the story about? What is the focus about this story? Repentance. Repentance. Now, what is repentance? Usually I think of repentance is changing the way we think. Admitting so change what you've done and then change how you do it. Or yeah. Do it. But it's not, just, uh, it's not just something that we say, but it's something... It's like you said, it's like, man, we're turning around. Our life is turned around. We're no longer going this Same way. Direction. It's like I've turned 180 degrees and I'm marching this direction. Toward. Zacchaeus was doing his own thing. He was collecting great physical wealth. You know I mean? He was ripping people off. He was amassing riches, doing his own thing. Now he met Jesus and there's been a big change in his life. Instead of well, looking at me, 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 he has changed. He's turned 180 degrees. Now it's like, I'm going to give half of everything I own to the poor. I'm going to pay back anybody I stole from, pay him back four times. I mean, in the story, did you hear anything about repentance? I mean, the actual words? The actual no, words no. not in that story. But that's the evidence. But we see repentance, you know, it's an action. We see that demonstrated in Zacchaeus's life. So you're going away from so what? It's not you doing what I want, but it's going towards what God toward wants. God. And what does God yeah. want? He wants us to care for the poor. He wants us not to steal. And if we did steal, He wants us to make restitution for it. You know, make up for what we've. I mean, you can't make up for it, but you know, make amends for what we've done if that's possible. You know, so there's a change of heart. There's a change of actions. You know, that's the fruit of repentance that we see, which is visible in Zacchaeus's life. So we didn't, you know, we didn't talk about repenting, but we see that evidence in his life. So that's, you know, when we're teaching this lesson, that's one of the things you have to key on. You know, it's like, make sure you, make sure that you catch that nugget because it doesn't say it, but it's that evidence mm-hmm. there. Um, so talking about, you know, that's repent. So who should repent? Everybody. Yeah. I mean, not, sinners. Yeah. I mean, the, the Zacchaeus definitely needed to because he is, he is a sinner. He is a focus, you know, on the story kind of. But it's like, does the crowd need to repent? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, look at, you know, was there sin in the crowd's life? Well, yeah, they were judging Zacchaeus. They were, they were grumbling about Jesus. You know, I mean, there was sin in their lives. They need to, they need to repent just as much as Zacchaeus did. Sin is sin. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs to repent. Romans three twenty three says, "For the, for all sin fall short of the glory of God." So all of us are sinners. Everybody needs to repent. So those are, you know, this has some extra questions in the book, you know, 
what does it mean to repent or what does it mean to believe, who should believe, things like that. And those are questions I don't worry about trying to have to cover all of them, you know, the, or cover them in a certain order. It's just, you know, they kind of come up naturally mm -hmm. within the stories you're answering questions, right. wherever, okay. you know, it's kind of like wherever the Holy Spirit leads. This just kind of guides things and make you think deeper. Okay, so we've talked about, you know, the story, what does it teach us about God? What does it teach us about man? Do you think of anything else before we move on? Making sure we... Uh, there's, there's choice for everyone there again. Yeah. Everyone had a choice. Everyone had a choice. Is that key as kid inside? No. I... And everyone had an excuse, too. Some some chose to use an excuse and some didn't. And Zacchaeus could say, well, yeah, I can't see Jesus because I'm too short. And um, the crowd, they had another excuse of Jesus is hanging out with Zacchaeus. So they're not going to hang out there. I always think about Zacchaeus. Nothing is going to stop him from seeing Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, there's a big yeah, crowd, and he was short, but it's like, that don't matter. I'm but he gonna... was short and rich, and I'm sure climbing a tree is not a normal, it was yeah. not a normal thing for a rich man to do. Yeah. For any, like, for any on, man. I'm going to great lengths here. Yeah. Nothing's going to stop him from meeting Jesus. Not tearing his nice clothes or yeah. losing his wallet. Yeah. So he repented. You know, we see that evidence that we've talked about, you know, he you know, became a follower of Jesus. You know, Jesus saved him that day. So what is what should we not do? Don't be like the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be the crowd. Yeah, that's kind of the... Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they they don't don't judge others. Don't. Yeah. The judging. Grumble. What? The grumbling. Don't, don't focus on other people's problems. Don't, don't point out their problems like they're worse than yours, right? That's what yeah. you're saying. Right. Well, and they were so focused on Zacchaeus that they missed the, missed the fact that Jesus was here. Right. Yeah. Totally missed the salvation. Yeah. They were so focused on Zacchaeus that they Jesus, missed God. Jesus went right by him. God went right mm -hmm. by him and they missed out. You know, I think that's that is how a lot of people nowadays it's like, well, so and so he's so bad, I don't want to be like you know, I don't want to be like that or I don't I'm not that bad. I'm not, that bad. I'm not going to church. There's too many hypocrites. Too many hypocrites. Mm -hmm. And then you know, they do miss God completely. Yeah. Yeah, when we're focusing on other people, we're not focusing on God. Mm -hmm. You know, we're pretty much got our eyes off what we should be focused on. And I yeah. think probably too, we shouldn't think that God can't. Because their mindset was God can't do anything with Zacchaeus. He is too far gone. Yeah. And we shouldn't limit God, I guess. Yeah. Don't write anybody off. And they tried to put God in the box. Jesus didn't say in the box, but they tried to say, okay, you're good, they're bad, we can't hang out together. But what should we do then? Seek after God. Um, make restitution. Repent. Believe. <laughs> Give to the poor. I think maybe one of the things Zacchaeus did was he didn't let the crowd bother him. He mm -hmm. did what he knew he needed to do. So do what you know God wants you to do, mm -hmm. not Don't what worry you, about others. other expectations. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how to word that short, but. Don't worry what others are saying. Mm hmm. Um. And, you know, I guess we have it. You seek God, but he follow. He he went after Jesus. 
follow God, not just seeking, but following. Because he, he seeked him up to the point where Jesus found him, and then he said, okay, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Well, Zacchaeus, okay. when he said he's going to give back four times what was taken from him, that's actually from the Old Testament, which a new believer is not going to, you know, they don't even know the story of Zacchaeus. But when you go back and look at Levitical law, what God gave us, he's like, if you ever, God told Moses, if somebody steals something, you pay him back. Um, you pay him back. I don't think it was four. I can't remember. Off the top if they stole a sheep, it was four times. Okay. Yeah, there's different things, had different. That's but, right. I remember. But anyway, yeah. So, so Zacchaeus was obeying the law, whether he knew it or not. You know, and a new believer's not going to pick up on that because they don't right. know the Old Testament. You know, how many new believers have read Leviticus? And Zero. But knew that he was a Levite, right? Wasn't he a Levite? Or is uh, his nobody. name just Levi? They don't have a name. Levi. But anyway, you know, God wrote his law on Zacchaeus's heart. You know, and so he was being obedient to the law you know, which is, again, you know, the fruit of repentance. You know, we see that evidence there. But God was prompting him to do things. Now, with the new believers, a lot of times, this is kind of a side note, chase a rabbit here for a second. But I've seen a lot of people, it's like, okay, you're a new believer. Now, quit doing this. Stop that. Do this. And start laying out the law. Here's a, here's all these things. You can't do that anymore. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, God will write his law in our hearts. And I, you know, I trust the Holy Spirit's teaching a whole lot better than you or me or anybody else. And it's like, as we go through and teach them, show them God's word. It's like, here's, and here's God's word. And let the Holy Spirit prompt them. I mean, Zach, yes, he repented. All he needed to do is like, oh, you know, Jesus, son of God, I repent. I believe I'm following you. But Jesus didn't say, okay, now you need to give half your money away to the poor people. Take care of the poor because I love the poor. And also, let me tell you about stealing. You know, he didn't, you know, the Holy Spirit brought those things into Zacchaeus' mind, you know, put them on his heart, and he started obeying those things. It doesn't take us to start, you know, because a lot of times in the, where we came from, they was, they had a list. Before you get baptized, you got to square all this stuff up. You know, and they had a list of things. I was like, we don't need to do that. Let Not the Holy in Spirit. In Nepal. Right. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit take care of those and things. And then the other thing is when we start doing that, we create an idea that this is what's important. And God might be convicting me of something else, but mm -hmm. hey, it's not right. on that list, so maybe it's not important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let God choose what's we, important. We never for say, hey, we, yeah, we won't baptize you because you know, you're you gossip. You need to deal with that gossip. No, yeah. It's not on the list, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. We things? might say drinking and smoking or you know something like chewing that, or chewing whatever. or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's like, here's my list. And it's like, so what, you know, how do you draw a line between what's good enough and what's acceptable sins? Mm -hmm. It's like, but what, what you said earlier, we're teaching them to obey. Right. And so yeah. let God prompt them and then they respond with obedience. Mm -hmm. We're teaching them these stories and they're going to be learning on their own after this, you know, as they start learning to feed themselves with daily Bible study and prayer time. And in God's timing, he's going to speak because each one of us are different. And he's going to speak to us individually because we're not robots. And he'll take care of those things. You know, one guy, if he smokes, he might, you know, God might tell him this time or it might be this time. But, you know, what's that person need? That's up to God because he knows them. You know, so we, sh you know, we need to trust God on those things. We can show them the word and just, you know, but making a list. Zacchaeus, I mean, I just thought it was neat that in this story, you know, here's the things that God convicted him. You know, he didn't have Jesus. You know, the story doesn't say Jesus was telling him to do these things. This is what God put on his heart to do. Give half his stuff to the poor. Pay back four times. And obedience to the Old Testament law. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, I think that's an important point, you know, that we 
don't want to miss those things. Yeah, that's a good one. Quit living the wrong way. Yeah. Because then it's like, man, being a Christian just a bunch of... Oh, yeah. I forgot about that one. A bunch of I rules. That word is, right? A bunch of rules. And you and can get that... if I mess hint. up, then what? But you can get you those rules. Yeah. Failure, you couldn't remember all the rules at well, the beginning. Well, not only a failure, but am I still saved? I mean, it, it comes... It those rules, though, I mean, it, it becomes more like you know, Hinduism and Buddhism and Islam. It's like, here's all the things you got to do to be a good follower of this faith and mm-hmm. or this religion and it's like so anyway that's just what God eliminates and says work on this one now you just respond with obedience and God will do better than we ever could so and we're getting way deeper than any brand new believer would get probably but that's this is really good stuff but but at the same time if you're doing it with the idea of reproduction that's right then you might want to, depending on where they're at, especially if they grew up in the church, mm-hmm. um, you might want to hit that one more because yeah. they're going to really quick go to this is the list of things I got. I want you to do. Certainly, when up. I'm discipling our counselors in discipling their campers, I really want to hit on this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, if you grew up in a say a Roman Catholic church, you know, under very you know, some, not all churches are the same, but I've seen some that are very, you know, focused on the rules. You know, like, do this and you'll be a good Catholic. You know, not all Catholics are like that, but that's just, you know, so, you know, you might have to. Or a good Baptist. <laughs> yeah, they're yes. Baptist going to be like that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, very legalistic about things. I think so, our human nature has become legalistic. Yeah. It's and it's, fault. that's what, I mean, I know for me, it's like, when I ever, anytime I ever work for a boss, it's like, just tell me what you expect. Just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. And I'll be your best employee. Because we want mm-hmm. something tangible. Because, like, I can look at those rules. There you go. Right. So, but anyway, back to this story, you know, we're talking about repenting and believing. You know, believing means that we choose to trust Jesus Christ as Lord. Zacchaeus called him, you know, look, Lord, here's what I'm doing. We see the fruit from his repentance, but he's acknowledging him as Lord following him so he believes so you know he was saved as jesus said you know today you know salvation's come to this home this is a child of abraham and uh, we have that assurance that in first john 1 9 if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from purify us from all unrighteousness you know so that's a promise that we can stand on that if we confess our sins He's going to forgive us our sins. In Romans 10, 13, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So those are promises that we can go over with that new believer again just to make sure. It's like, you know, they were discipling them. They made this decision yesterday or, you know, some other last night or last year or whatever. But it's like, you know, we just need to make sure they understand. It's like, you know, this is the assurance of salvation. Make sure they, they really understand. And uh, so then repentance is also a lifestyle. Yeah, a lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's not it's a, an action. I did, I did that then, but maybe God illuminates another area. Mm-hmm. Now I have to repent and believe. If if we if we believed and repented there should be evidence in our life just like Zacchaeus. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's, I mean, it may not be as drastic as what Zacchaeus did where it's like, hey, I, you know, I went to the bank and took out half my savings and gave it to, you know, Goodwill or something. You know, it's like, may not be something that drastic, but there should be some, you know, fruit there that we could see that they can talk about. It's like, look, there was a change. It was a Cost yeah. following Christ. So closing this, you know, training session out with this new believer, you know, discipleship time. You know, we always close in prayer, and then, but there's an assignment, something measurable that we're going to talk about them doing. And this one, you know, the prayer is, and this is a short prayer because, you know, a simple prayer because you know this is somebody who just you know was not a believer until, you know, this is their first class, the first time that we've had the time with them. But 
this is just an example of something that they can pray, you know, but I always encourage them. It's like, you need to make this personal. You know, if they can't read, you, obviously you have to read it to them and kind of discuss, you know, in this prayer, you know, it just says, Jesus, I want to leave my old life of sin and follow you. I believe you to be the Lord of my life. That's what we saw Zacchaeus. You know, he left his old stuff away instead of following after his own desires, acquiring his own wealth, but he changed to follow Jesus. He gave us half his stuff to the poor. He paid back those he stole from four times. And, you know, he's following Jesus. So that's the evidence. And that's what, you know, just confessing that to the Lord, telling Jesus, you know, praying and telling the, you know, the Father, it's like, I'm left that behind. I'm following you. And if the Lord prompts them to, you know, something in their mind but during this discipleship time, it's like, well, tell them that. But, you but know, then, so there would be, after you've, you've talked about Zacchaeus and everything, then there would be the question of, so what what is God prompting you to change in your life? Yeah, and that kind of leads us to the assignment. You know, it's like, okay, I mean, they can pray that right then. But, you know, it's like, okay, but during this week, what are you going to do? You know, you've confessed, you've confessed your sin. So this week, what are you going to do about that? I mean, Zacchaeus, you know, if Zacchaeus was here, it's like, okay, Zach, you know, you said you've been stealing from people, collecting the taxes, so what are you going to do this week? Well, I'm not going to do that anymore. Okay, well, that's a good, that's a good first step. What else? Well, I'm going to go pay, pay, pay people back four times. Oh, that's great. Who are you going to pay? Who have you stolen from? Okay, when are you going to go do that? You know, give them a good measurable actions. You know, so next week, we come back on a following Monday, we can say, okay, Zach, did you go talk to John and ask forgiveness for stealing from him? Did you pay him back what you stole from him? You know, that's then it's like, did you do it? Were you obedient? You know, and that's, and that's what we're trying to teach them. It's like, at that point, it's like, we're teaching them to be obedient to the, the command. You know, it's like, he really did repent. Mm -hmm. You know, something has changed in his life because look what, is evidenced here. You know, maybe it's, you know, getting in a fight with his brother and he needs to ask his brother to forgive him. Maybe that's what the Lord convicted him of. I mean, whatever it is, you know, during this time that comes up, it's like, well, pray and ask, you know, God to forgive you because all sinned against God. And But if it's against a person, what are you going to do to make restitution with them? So you were just using Zacchaeus as an example and most likely it won't go anywhere close to <laughs> all of that as far as the just, many things they would have to do. But And you don't want to implant something in their head like we've been talking about, but um, we do want to lead them in thinking about mm -hmm. what does God, like you said, what do you, what do you feel God wants you to do? Yeah. So the prayer here, you know, in this little booklet, it's, it's very simple. You know, I want to leave my old life of sin and follow you. But it's like, so what specific sin is the Lord laying on your heart right now? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and they're going to know. They're going to know. You know, it's like, man, I I have the worst mouth. I'm fighting with everybody. I'm calling people names. I'm whatever. Whatever it is, you know, the Lord's going to bring something to their mind. and They're going to tell you. And it's like, okay, so we need to, you know, confess that to the Lord because he'll forgive us like we just talked about. But we're going to turn and leave that behind. But is there is there somebody that we need to go ask forgiveness from? You know, but trust God to be Lord of your life. You know, Lord, I'm going to follow you. But then, you know, that last one, make sure there's a measurable action. So the next time that we come, you know, it's like, did you go talk to whoever? Did you do this? Or maybe it's just, I'm going to pray this week. You know, but most of the time, God's going to lay something on their hearts, like he did Zacchaeus right there. Because mm -hmm. he really works in our lives. Yeah. It's not just all. So that's the first one. Good.